Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is part two about research uh, grants uh, and how to apply for them. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I said that I would go through an excellent uh, research grant example. And so I'm gonna be reading through one today, going through the different sections and I'm gonna leave it over here on the side for you to see it as I go through it. Um, so let's get straight into it. I'll leave the link for it down below so you can access it. Um, so to start off with, this is 27 pages long. Um, and you'll see how it's broken down and how much detail you actually need to go into when writing a research grant application. So the first section here is the project summary. Now this is the also known as an abstract. And you can see here they've summarized exactly what the topic is going to be about, um, the objective for the project, um, and then what they're identifying. So what these objectives specifically are, and then how they're going to be doing that, um, and then how they're going to be assessing evidence, so what they're going to be um, using to analyze, uh, the different groups, so the methods, briefly the methods, um, and then saying how they're going to follow them up, um, what the results may be, um, and then how they're going to implement and use this research in the future, and then, in the fu and then just overall, this would engage a population, etc. So you can see it's a very nice summary, a very nice abstract from which you can pretty much gain all the information that you need um, to have a nice background um, and a nice summary of the topic. Then the next part is a project narrative. So this is mentioning uh, what the project is uh, about in a more like less sciencey, like less, but in a more kind of general and um, layman term, if you want to say it like that. So you can see here that they're saying like what the idea is in this project, we're going to adapt, implement and evaluate a proven health record. Um, and this is a bit of a like very short um, summary. Then moving on to the specific aims. Now, this is a very long section and for research grant proposals, you do want it to be very specific. So they start off by giving a quick background as to um, what the objective is for this project um, and then the specific aims. So you have specific aim number one, and this is what it is, to conduct a cluster randomized trial that includes 30 primary care clinics, etc. And then hypothesis number one, hypothesis number two within that specific aim. Then aim number two, here are the hypothesis number three and number four. Then aim number three. Now, if I were to look into this more detail, into more detail, you'd probably find that these different aims are not linked. Um, they're, they're similar, but they don't rely on each other. And look at the wording that they use. So conduct a cluster trial. Next one, assess. The next one, describe. Okay, so remember what I said to you in the last video about using like really strong action words? These are the kind of wording that you want to use. Moving on to the research strategy. Um, so this is starting off with the significance. So again, as I mentioned, you want to talk about um, what gaps there are. So why is your research significant? So here they've mentioned what gaps there are in cancer prevention care. So here's the date, the detail. Um, they've used referencing here. Yeah, they have used referencing here. So again, like, you know, it is a quick like literature review. So you do want to use some referencing here. And then they've gone into giving a bit more specific details about this particular topic. Um, and so it's quite long as you can see. Then it goes on to the innovation. Um, so again, this is one of the key concepts that is going to be assessed and that's innovation. So here's um, innovation. So why is this like exciting? Why is this new? They've said that the, the, the tool is innovative um, and there's a lot more detail about why it is something original. So a really important section. Then moving on to the preliminary studies and the investigators. So here you can see that they've done preliminary studies and previous experiences. So the core investigators, Dr. Elliot, O'Connor, et cetera, they are experienced, they're from this team, their expertise is in oncology. This is where they, they do lecturing in this university. They've done X, Y, and Z. These are the projects that they've done before. Um, so you can really see that they've, they're bigging up and they're really like um, shouting the accolades for the actual investigators within the team. Then moving on to the preliminary assessment. So data collected during these dates demonstrate this is what they've demonstrated. You want to make sure that the data is very clear. Here is a table with the percentages, the P numbers, etc. Um, so really nice, very short, but if you have any data to show that supports your research, include it. Number four is the approach. So this is the actual methods and the actual approach that you're going to be taking to be able to um, do this research. 
So they've got the theoretical framework. Um, so this is the theory, the idea behind it. Um, then you've got the study design. Um, so this, they're saying for this cluster, we're going to be using um, this uh, clinic, etc. So it really, it is quite specific to this topic. Um, but what's the design? Then the study sites. So again, they're going to different clinics. So that's why they've included this. But it's saying that they're going to be going to 30 um, primary care clinics in this area, Minnesota, Wisconsin, etc. Um, then the participants, who are they? Um, and they have this really nice diagram. And I think diagrams are something that are, are really underrated in the research uh, field. Um, in general, when, you, when you're trying to explain something, a, a lot of the time a diagram will do the job better than you. So it is, and also just to kind of break up the text, having a diagram there also helps. Um, so here they're talking about the, the participants, the patients, um, which is really important considering this whole study is about a clinic and the participants being patients within that clinic. You need to show that you've considered all the um, factors that there are to consider with um, actually um, having patients. Um, moving on, you've got some more descriptions for the, like the patients, how they're going to get data. I'm assuming there's something to do with ethics here. Um, so you can see this is quite long there. She's got step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Um, and then the interfaces. So this is really their method steps and step six, step seven. It doesn't have to be this long if this isn't what you're doing. Um, like This is really detailed, but um, then, okay, so then they've moved on to the definition and measurements of dependent variables. So this is a, this goes, this is quite nice because it shows that they understand what could change, what doesn't change, what they're looking at, what they're studying, what they're measuring, specifically like when it comes to variables. Um, so again, they've got that um, written there. And then they've linked it to their aims actually. So you can see that they've said like, um, this is related to aim one, this, this variable is related to aim two, this variable is related to aim three and aim four. So again, just going back to like linking everything together. So that's really nice. Um, measurement of independent variables, so how they're going to be measuring the variables as well. Then the next section is the analysis. So um, again, this is to do with your methods. It's all within the approach um, section. And this is the analysis, how are you actually going to analyze it? Here they've said that they're going to be using some sort of screening. They've got their variable, they've got some equation. Um, they're using this model um, and yeah, sample size. Oh, again, justifying why they're using the sample sizes for AIM-1. So you really want to go into that kind of depth. So why are they using the um, sample size for AIM-1? Um, and they're gonna have all that information there. They've got the table there with the percentages and then hypothesis two, AIM-2 analysis, what they're going to be doing, justifying all of that. So, can keep going down. Okay, then they've talked about um, the organization of the project, um, which you don't need to include. I mean, this person, Dr. Elliot, will lead weekly meetings of the research team. If you're someone that has your own lab and you're someone that is writing a research grant for that particular case, then um, yes, but if you are not, then you don't necessarily need to include this, but it does, I mean, it would add some value if you were to say something like, you know, we have weekly meetings with a team, with our collaborators, um, and you were to write something like that, that does add some value. Um, it sh then the next part is the strengths and limitations of the study. So this part is where you're saying what any issues are that could occur and how you are planning to overcome them. So here it says, unfortunately, these systems have failed to deliver consistent benefits in the future. However, over a series of projects, we have developed this. So remember, whenever you say something negative or some like some limitation, you always have to overcome it with a positive. Um, then the last bit is the dissemination and future plans. So how this research is going to be like presented in the future, published in the future, how it's going to be used. Um, our main dissemination goal is to spread the use of this uh, method um, into primary care practices and delivery systems based on our findings and further informed by the implementation concept of favorite. So that's a really nice sense because they're saying that what they're going to do is they're going to take this um, this method, they're going to use it with other practices and they're going to like further um, implement it into other frameworks as well. So that's really nice. That shows that they've, they've got a long term um, and a widespread um, benefit. The last sentence is really nice as well. Doctors Elliot, O'Connor, etc. They are ideally positioned to do this as they are national leaders in primary care and quality improvement. Like that is the last sentence you're leaving me with. Like you've said all of this and you said that these people that are applying for this grant are the best people for this job. Like 
essentially is what they're saying. They are the ones that deserve this money. So that is, uh, and then you've got the reference list and I think that's pretty much it. It's quite a, a long reference list actually. So like, as you can see with this research um, grants proposal, it's been broken down into like the sections that I mentioned in the previous video with the addition of one or two little sections because of how in depth and like, it seems like this is quite a big a scope project but what you can do is if you take a look at this one you like some sections of it you could add that within the other section so if you want to add something to do with like uh, the organization and you're having week weekly meetings you could add that into the um, bit about you as an investigator and saying like why you're the best person for this particular research project um, so yeah I hope that was helpful I'll leave the link for this uh, down below so you can see it um, and refer back to it and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed and I hope that was really helpful I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.